Hi guys, welcome back. This is part 5 in my video tutorial series showing you how to create your own cartoon in Toon Boom Harmony. In the previous video, we created all these nodes for the various body parts for our character, and now we are going to do the colour and line art. Each art node is actually made up of four sub-layers, and that is the overlay, the line art, the colour art, and the underlay. Um, on yours, you'll probably just have the line art and the colour art, and you can change that by coming into Control u If we go into advanced. Just tick this box here, support overlay and underlay art, and then they will appear there. Press OK. And then we can start putting some line work down. Before we do that though, I'm just going to go into the color tab here, and you can see that by default there's already a set of colors already here as you open the software. If you want to make a new color, you can press this plus button. That will create a new one there, and then you can double click it. You can rename it. So we'll rename it to line, and it's already black, but if you did want to change the color, you just double click that. There's single wheel mode which is this one and then multiple wheel mode here so we're just gonna change that to black you might be tempted to use one of the pre-existing colors for your character however I would recommend not doing that and actually deleting that because if you do use that method for this character and then you do the same method for another character and you bring them into the same scene those colors will actually conflict with each other and you'll get incorrect colors showing for your character even if you renamed them and recolored them and that's because they will share the same color ID so when you do start a new project, just delete those colors and make new ones. So we will be making new colors later on, but for now we're just going to focus on the line work. And Toon Boom Harmony has a really good set of art tools. I created this character turn around in Clip Studio Paint, but I could have just as easily done it in Toon Boom Harmony. So let's start with the pencil tool. And if I zoom in here and just draw a line, and then I select it with the select tool like that, you can see that there's an orange line here. And that's important because when we come to create color, the color color is going to be underneath the line work and it's actually going to come up to the middle here rather than the edge. If I were to do the same thing with a brush like that, you can see that the edge of the line is on the edge rather than in the center. So it's important to use pencil tool instead of the brush tool and that will become more evident later on when we start doing some color and auto patches and masking. So if we come back to the pencil tool here, you can see that there's a set of options that we can change. So we can change the line thickness if we wanted to, and we can change the smoothing. If I change this down to a five and I go like that, it does smooth out after you've made the line, and that's because we've got the center line smoothing on five. If we blast that up to a hundred and I go like this, it gets a lot smoother. So we're going to change that back down to a five, and you can change the thickness of the lines after you've made them. So if I use the select tool and I can come down and I change it to a 10 for example, that will thicken that line up. For the time being though, we are not going to use the pencil tool, we are going to use the shape tool. And we're going to use the shape tool because the base of this head here is perfectly round. So I'm going to start in the middle and then as I drag, it drags from the corner. But if you hold Alt, it will actually come from the center instead, which is going to be a lot more useful for this. And if we hold Shift, that will actually maintain a square aspect ratio so that you can have perfect circle. So we'll just bring it up to here. We want everything to be central. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to here. We're gonna right click alignment guide. You've got show alignment guides, lock alignment guides, clear, new horizontal, and new vertical. We're gonna make a new vertical that will make it appear in the camera view. We're just gonna put it in the center and then everything we draw, we can actually snap to this alignment guide here. And then I can lock that so I don't accidentally select it. I'm gonna select that circular shape that we've just made with the select tool. And in the tool properties for the select tool, you can see that there's this snapping tool and I've got it turned on. If I bring it over here, it will snap as we get to it and it will highlight as well. And that's how you know it is snapped to the guide. If you did wanna nudge the position of this as well, you can use the arrow keys. So I'm just going to move that down a little bit and then we're going to turn that alignment guide off just for now. Something really important that I wanted to talk about as well is the difference between moving this with the select tool 
and moving it with the transform tool. So these both achieve the same thing if I move them in both. However, when you are first creating the art for your rig, you don't want to use that transform tool. And the reason for that is if I press this plus button here and select coordinates and control points, these values are all at zero. So if I select this and move it over here, they stay at zero. If I use the transform tool and bring that over here, they've changed. That's not desirable because when we are creating our art, we want everything to be at a default zero value. So if I come back to this transform tool and move it over here and I press shift R, that brings it back to its default zero value. However, if I move this over here and then I grab that transform tool and I press shift R, it's not going to do anything because I've told Toon Boom that the default rested position is here and that's because I've moved it with the select tool. So I'm going to control Z that. So the transform tool is more for animation, but for now we don't want to move elements with the transform tool. And just to make sure you don't do that, you can come into the head layer here and see where it says animate using animation tools. If you just click that off, then you can't move it with the transform tool. And then if we come up into the options here and then we go over to advanced, you want to make sure that this is off and if we highlight over it it says here when it is disabled the node will not be editable visually in the camera view with the transform tool or any of the advanced animation tools which is what we want so we want to make sure that is off by default and you can also press ctrl a in the node view come up to this button here and then you can select this and make sure that's off for all these drawing nodes so we're going to carry on doing this head now and and I'm going to select the contour editor. This allows us to manipulate the control points. So this circle tool, it's made it a circle, but it is also a pencil line rather than a brush line. So if we wanted to manipulate these control points, we can select it and then you can see these handles appear here. So if I were to move that, it would change it like that. You can also make the handles smaller to achieve a different type of line. If you wanted a sharper shape, you can move these handles independently of each other by holding Alt. If you wanted to get rid of a control point, you can select it and press delete. If you wanted to add a control point, you can hold control and then click it like that. So now we want to carry these lines up towards the center. So I'm going to turn my alignment guide back on and I'm just going to create control points here and here. And then what I can do is I can just select these lines and just delete them like that. So now I'm going to go over to the shape tool again and this time we're going to select the line tool. Now if we come over to the tool properties of the line tool here, making sure that the head drawing node is selected, just make sure this magnet tool is on and if you hold it just make sure snap to contour is selected. And then if I approach the end of this line here, see how it just snaps to it? We are going to start the line here. Um, I'm going to turn snap to alignment guides on as well and then it will snap to the center there. I'm going to do the same for the other side. So now that we've got those two lines, if I come back to the contour editor, I can just select the middle of that line and move it up to my desired position. So just make sure you are keeping the line art on this line art sub layer here. So now we can go through each body part and just start drawing it out. So for this character, he's made up of a lot of straight lines and circular curves. So most of this will be with the shape tools rather than the pencil tool. And we're just going to focus on the line work first and then we're going to move on to the color. So let's start on the mouth. And again, just like you could with the other shape tools, there's a snap to contour there. And quickly, I'm going to talk about the polyline tool as well. So I'm just going to start in the middle and then I'm just going to put points around the edges here. Look at that. And then you'll see a plus button here and that will complete the whole line. Now, if we come back to the contour editor, we're just going to round these points out. So there's no handles here at the moment. So if I hold alt and then I just drag out, that line will produce more of a curve and I'm going to do that with every control point. I'm going to turn that snapping off for the time being. And there we go, one mouth. 
So if we select that neck there, and you just want to make sure these lines are all closed off. So you don't want any open shapes like that. And we're going to turn the snapping on for this line. And I'm just going to extend that neck a little bit past that t-shirt line there. Even though this section of the neck isn't going to be seen. I just, I want to make it a little bit more rounded. Then we can do the torso, which is going to be a rectangle. So select that torso and then the rectangle tool. Just using all the tools, I'm going to create a control point in the middle there. I'm going to move that up. You can also select additional control points. And then we're going to nudge those down with the arrow keys. We're also going to come up to this option here, show controls. And then you can scale these anchor points from the center here. So we'll just bring those in. And then we'll raise those up so that they go over the line and we can even take that control point and then we can snap that to the alignment guide like that this bottom edge of the t-shirt is curved so i'm just going to select the middle and bring it down like that for this i will just smooth it out a little bit i do just want that to be a little bit more rounded so i'm just dragging those handles out so for the arm i'm going to do something a little bit different i'm going to actually do the line work for the whole arm first so if you want to hide any of these elements, if we want to hide the torso, for example, we can press D for disable, and that will just turn it red and will make it disappear. If you want to enable it again, you just press A. So let's just keep that hidden for now, and we're going to go to the arm upper. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to do a circle. I'm going to press Shift and Alt, just like we did before, so that it's a perfect circle. I just want to make sure that this circle is the width of the arm. So maybe I can make it smaller like that. And then I'm going to drag that up to the shoulder. Now, when we are creating these different arms, we want them to rotate really smoothly around the elbow. So I'm actually going to copy and paste that circle by selecting it, press Control CV. And then I'm going to bring that down to the wrist. Um, another thing I want to do is if I select this circle, but this is just to tell me where the center of the circle is for later. So I'm going to select the brush tool, zoom right in to that point, change it to a thickness of one. And then I'm just going to put a dot there just so I know where to put the pivots later on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the line and you can see it snaps to the edge of that circle there and then it will snap to the edge of that circle there. Then I'm going to create another line and again just snap those to there. These control points we're just going to move over here just to straighten up that arm and you can see that the lines are perfectly attached to the center so that when we move this circle we're just going to move that so that it's central and then we can move that arm back into position by selecting all of it with the lasso tool and we can move this pivot up to here it'll snap to, to there and then you can rotate it and then we've got our whole arm however we want to split that into upper and lower arm so we've got that there so we're going to take all of this, press Ctrl C, we're going to go to the arm lower, press Ctrl V. Press D on that to disable it, go back to the arm upper, and then we're just going to delete some of these lines. So we're just going to delete this circle by using the select tool, which will select the whole shape, and you can delete that. And then we'll go to the contour editor, and we'll just bring that down, and then it'll snap to that halfway point of that circle there. And then keep that mark there, because we'll need that for later delete these lines so now we've got the upper arm there and then we're going to do the opposite for the lower arm so again we're going to delete that we can get rid of that little pivot we can bring these down to here so now we've got an upper and lower arm and you can see you've got a nice exact circle there and that will be for later when we want to rotate the joints we want it to rotate around a perfect circle so I'm gonna use the polyline tool for this hand and you will be creating a lot more hand shapes in the future. So it might be quicker just to select the pencil tool. So you can do that if you want. And if you wanna stop creating that line, just press control and click, and then you can start another one. Then we're just gonna do what we did before, hold alt and just smooth out these edges. So there we've got one hand. Something I do like to do is I want to taper off these lines. It will do that automatically if you're using the pencil tool because 
Toon Boom picks up the pressure sensitivity if you're using a tablet. If you're not using a tablet, however, or you want to taper off these lines, you can hold the contour editor, go into the pencil editor, click this line, and you can just bring these ends in like that and adjust those handles. Or you can click this, hold Alt, and that will allow you to select the end without manipulating the rest. Um, if you didn't want to manipulate this whole line here, you just wanted to manipulate it from a certain point, you can press and hold control and it will add some points in there and then you can just adjust them as necessary. So there we go, one hand will bring back that lower arm and there we go. We're also going to add a shoulder in as well. So for the shoulder, I'll probably use the rectangle tool to start with. That'll just allow us to snap to the arm shape. And then we'll just follow that contour like that. Probably delete that. So that will be our shoulder there. And it's pretty much more of the same for the other elements. So I'm just gonna speed up this video now and just finish the rest of these body parts. So we've done most of the line work now, we will be adding some things later on, but for the time being, let's move on to the colour. So like I said before, we did all the line work on that line art sublayer, and now we want to go over to the colour art. You can see in this window here we have a drawing view, so if we click on that, while we've got the head selected. And you can draw in this view, and you can also draw in the camera view. In the drawing view, it just isolates the head, so you can work on it without seeing any of the other elements. And you can turn on this light bulb here, and that will just allow you to see all of the other elements that you've created. But something I wanna focus on is the color. So if we go into the color tab here, we need to start adding some colors. So I'll go back to the camera view, and we'll go into the node view, and for the time being, we'll just take this transparency and just take it out. We'll go back into the color and we'll just start adding some of these colors. So we've got the yellow, got the blue, the red, the white, got the inside of the mouth and we've got the tongue. So we'll start with the yellow and you can take this here and you just have to drag it to the desired color and that will create that color there. And then you can rename that. So we'll call that yellow. You could call it skin if you wanted to. We're actually gonna share the colors for the skin and the symbol, so I'm just gonna call it yellow. So we've made all our colors now, let's go over to the drawing view that we were in before, and we're gonna select the paint bucket, and if we fill, you can see that nothing happens. Now the reason for that is because we've got this eye icon selected here, now if we turn that off, the line work disappears, and the reason for that is because we're not on the line art. It just shows the art for the sub layer that we have selected, but you can click that eye icon on, and that will just show all of the sub layers together. But you wanna be careful because if you fill this shape, you can see that it's on the line art. We don't want it on the line art, we want it on the color art. If I turn that off, there's nothing to fill here, and that's because there's no contours to fill inside of. So what you need to do, you come up to this button here, create color art from line art. So you click that, and you can see now there is a contour that has been automatically created from the line art. That blue line here is just to represent what the color will fill up to. You won't actually see this. So we can color that in now, and we've got our line art, and we've got our color art there. If I turn on this eye icon, they're both selected together. So we're gonna go back to the node view, and we're gonna put that transparency back in. And then we're just gonna go through all these different art nodes and start filling in this color. So we've got the mouth, and we're gonna select mouth inner. We need to select this button every time and make sure we're on the color layer, hand.
Now for the upper leg, you can see that it's not filling and that's because we've got a gap in our line work. So what we can do, we can select this and we can choose close large gap. But what I do wanna do is just go to the line work here and just make sure that's attached. Go back to the color and then it'll fill in for us. So we've done most of the color work here, but we need to rearrange these elements in the correct order and we shall be doing that in the next video. See ya! Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions, you can leave them down in the comment section below, or you can ask me live over on Twitch where I stream this stuff five days a week. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please feel free to like and subscribe. Your support really does go a long way. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, you can click that notification bell. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!